Welcome to the Q&A session just for parents and supporters of new students. Um, this is a, a co-production between the Office of Recru Recruitment, our wonderful friends over there, and of course, Student Life. My name is uh, Julia Halfyard, and I work with the Student Experience Office, where we craft uh, and hone and present wonderful programs for our new students and, of course, for all students. So it is a real great honor to be your host for this evening. It's it's a uh, we're very, very happy to be back and uh, doing this kind of programming once more for you. But before we continue, um, I would like to present a land acknowledgement. We respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beotic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and the Beotic. We would also like to recognize the Inuit of Natasivut and Nunatukavut and the Innu of Natasinan and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all the peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. Now, a few housekeeping uh, things that we're just going to go through together. Uh, we're going to try to make this as easy as possible for everybody here this evening. Um, and we want to receive your feedback, your questions, uh, any queries you might have, or even uh, uh, comments. Um, so uh, there's a Q&A, and you will see this here. You can either put your questions in the chat box. We have two fantastic uh, moderators that are helping us. That's Jenny Mallard and Rhonda McMeekin, and they're going to be helping us. They're going to put links in. They're paying attention to all the conversation. So if you want to look, open your chat, you can see uh, what's happening there, a website, a link, and you can grab that then and make it easy for you. Um, we are going to be on Facebook via YouTube, so this part of the uh, program is uh, recorded, so I want you all to know that. Um, and uh, I think that's it. We just ask questions, glean some information, and uh, learn about the supports and services that we're so happy to offer here at Memorial University. The, out, the agenda for this evening, very, very simple. I'm going to introduce a fantastic panel of people that are here to uh, give you some information. I'm going to ask them questions. And after this hour, so this hour is from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock. From 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock, there are going to be breakout rooms that are available for our audience to go into. Uh, John Duff, uh, who is our tech wizard, our sorcerer really in the background, he's going to um, help na navigate that for us. So after this big discussion, there are breakout rooms. There are six, so you'll be able to um, enter three of the rooms for 20 minutes each and uh, get more specific information, ask questions to people there that are there to, to help, uh, help you navigate. So um, those breakout rooms will include career development, academic advising, uh, student success, accessibility services, uh, and the sexual harassment office. So that is the second hour of this program. Um, and this, of course, is our first uh, hour and we have some really honored guests here, which I will get to in a brief moment. So without further ado, I can't tell you how honored we all are to have um, President Dr. Vianne Timmons with us. And uh, she is here to bring us warm greetings and a message of welcome on behalf of the university. Thank you, Julie. I look like I'm laying on my chair here, but thank you so much. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm so pleased to be here. I want to welcome the parents, families, and supporters of our new undergrad students. And welcome to the fall 2022 semester. You know, I have four children, all who went to university, and I remember the angst and the worry um, about having your child go to first year university. Also, I will share with you, I can remember vividly going to university myself. My mother took me to the bus station. I had one suitcase. And she kept fixing my collar and she said to me, don't speak to any strangers. Now that was the only advice she gave me when I left to go to university. And that's pretty hard not to speak to strangers when you're a brand new student. So I all every time first year starts at the university when we welcome students, I, I remember it so vividly um, my first year. 
Uh, it's an exciting time for then and it's an exciting time now here at Memorial University. And we are a big community here. It's even more special this year because our campus will be a buzz with all the fun in-person orientation activities that we've missed the last couple of years. And I definitely missed it. I am the president that started in September 2020, just when the pandemic hit. And I'll tell you, um, it, 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 I really, really missed seeing and meeting students. So we're eagerly preparing all of our campuses to deliver a safe and vibrant university experience for your children. Our staff have worked so hard uh, this summer to ensure that the students are ready for our campus life and welcome activities are going to be taking place all throughout the month of September. We have fairs and expos offered on student supports and services, academic advice, health and wellness clubs and societies, volunteer opportunities and so, so much more. We're also offering social events for students such as live meet and greets, cafe concerts, personalized campus tours, and all of those would encourage you to encourage your child and children to participate. You know, just as our province is known to be so friendly and welcoming, our new students will find the same sense of community here at Memorial University of Newfoundland and Labrador. And to learn about Memorial and the many great things happening, I suggest you check out our online news site, the Gazette, which will give you some real insights. It's full of stories about the people of Memorial University and the exciting things they're doing. And our alumni and our students, it's a great thing to sign up for. You know, during my time here so far, the last two and a half years, I've learned so much about the impact that our university has on every nook and cranny of Newfoundland and Labrador and the global outreach we have. You know, there's an opportunity for your students to study at the Harlow campus in England, which is really exciting. So encourage your student to look at global opportunities that are available while they're studying at Memorial University. As our province's only university, families belong and impact the university community. Our strength come from our people, and that is really important. We want to provide opportunities for our students to volunteer, to work, to be mentored. We want you, if you are in town, to go to athletic events and, and to, to find out more about us. Um, and so please stay tuned, follow us on social media. You're always able to count on our community and we will ensure that your child has a fabulous experience. You know, we have a wonderful strategic plan transforming our horizons that speaks to the importance of community and the plan to further our legacy as one of Canada's most publicly engaged universities by working with organizations and communities in partnership for prosperity for this province. And to be, to be prosper, to prosper, we need your children, we need our students as leaders of tomorrow to have a successful university experience. We wanna increase Memorial's presence in the community. We want to make sure our students have opportunities in the community. New students are now part of Team Memorial, which is part of our strategic plan with our faculty, staff, and alumni and friends of the university. And it's a big team dedicated to your child to make sure they have a wonderful experience. So, you know, uh, Memorial University is a very, very special place. And I hope that you yourselves take the opportunity to come and visit, to attend our music, theater, um, speakers that are on campus, to go to sports games with, to see us as part of your family and, and to go and join us in all those activities. Thank you so much. Thank you to your children for choosing Memorial University. You honor us and we will make sure that we live up to our responsibility uh, to your child. So, um, so wonderful to, to meet you all virtually. And if you see me on the street or on campus, stop me and say hi. I'd love to get to know you. COVID's been a lonely time for two and a half years. So I'm really looking forward to meeting as many of you as I can. Take care and thank you, Julia. 
Thank you. Thank you for those very, very warm words. And, uh, you know, Dr. Timmons is right. If you do see her on the street, she is very warm and friendly because I've met her on the street a few times and gone up and, and she indeed has, has greeted me warmly. So thank you for that. Um, she also has alluded to the sense of community here at Memorial University. And I am telling you, we it, it, the office is a buzz, not currently because they're all gone home, but it during the day, it is a buzz with excitement with students that are planning and executing beautiful welcome events for uh, for your for your students uh, that are coming here. And we, we surely cannot wait for them to arrive this weekend and uh, on Tuesday for their first day of classes. So thank you for those uh, warm, warm messages uh, again. Uh, next, we have um, an, another uh, a greeting coming our way from Dr. Donna Hardy Cox, who is the Associate Vice President Academic Students, and she also is going to bring uh, warm greetings. Can you hear us, Dr. Hardy Cox? I think she might be having some tech difficulties. There you are. Wonderful. Welcome. I think I'm having some technical difficulties. You're a little lagged, but I think we can see you and hear you. I'm having internet challenges, so I'm actually doing this on my phone because my computer wouldn't work, but I couldn't help take the opportunity to stop in and to say a very warm welcome and thank you president timmons uh, you certainly need the way for all of us in terms of making uh, memorial a very welcoming community and very student centered and we thank you for that uh, i'm in my role as avp and dean of students i'm so excited i saw some students off to uh, prepare to training so they could welcome peers, could welcome other students earlier in the week. And I'm so excited for what they're gonna do to help their other students. I do wanna extend a warm welcome. Uh, I'm seeing some people in the chat saying they can't hear us. Can you hear me all right, um, Julia? I surely can, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, I do wanna extend also a warm welcome to all the parents and supporters with us this evening. It is a warm welcome and I've brought, I've put on my special shirt which says Memorial University Mom. So not only am I a professor um, and in my role as Dean, I also am a mom and I can certainly relate uh, having university students, uh, all the questions that you might have. So this is my personal invitation for you to enjoy your evening, uh, ask those questions that you want to ask. There'll be opportunities to get in groups. We've got a fabulous staff of student services and other professionals here at Memorial, and their job is to support your student and to help them adjust. They have lots of experience. They're very caring and they're interested in supporting your students. So take advantage of this evening, enjoy your evening, and I look forward to seeing you on campus as well. Thank you. Wonderful. I am so charmed that you're wearing that sweater. That is fantastic. I'm a little hot. <laughs> I bet for everyone who's not in Newfoundland right now, it's about 30 degrees here. So, but I, I, I'm so glad for your commitment in wearing that sweater. Um, so next uh, on our agenda, we're, I'm just going to uh, let you know who's on this panel today, um, and then I will introduce them and they will give a little overview on what support or service they're offering um, your students. So from academic advising, I have Dr. Echo Pittman. She is the Associate Register of Academic Advising and Outreach. From student residences, we have a Mr. Bruce Felbin, who's the director of student residences. From the internationalization office, we have Ms. Lynn Walsh and Ms. Marie Curtis, the manager of IO and also project coordinator in self-isolation. And from the Student Wellness and Counseling Center, we have Dr. Ken Fowler, the director of Student Wellness Counseling Center. From Student Life, we have Dr. Jennifer Brown. Director of Student Life. So without further ado, I think I'll just start at the top of my list, if that's okay, uh, dear friends. And uh, with academic advising, I shall introduce Dr. Echo Pittman, and she will give uh, a little brief rundown on what the Academic Advising Center does. Uh, thank you, Julia. Uh, 
Welcome, uh, parents and supporters. Uh, my son is also starting his university uh, study here next week. And like many of you, I'm very excited about his academic path. And I would also like to that you know that here at Memorial, uh, we have a very, very strong student support network in place to welcome and support your students. The Academic Advising Center is located at our science building, uh, room 4053. The advisor at the center, as well as the academic advisors in our academic units, are here to provide support and academic guidance, as well as to help your students to make their transition to Memorial. So the advisor can work with your students to help them identify their strength, their academic interests, and help them make their academic plan. And some of your students may have many programs in mind, or some of them may uh, are unsure what they want to do yet. Uh, I just wanted that parents and supporters know that it's totally okay. It's fine. They can reach out to academic advisors for a chat and we are here to help and we are here to support them to find their academic interests and to help them make plans. Uh, throughout the fall semester, whenever your student has any question or experience some challenges, they should always feel uh, comfortable and reach out to advisors at the center or advisors in their uh, academic units. Uh, advisors will help answer all their questions and help them connect with our uh, resources on campus to help them manage challenges and to help them succeed here at Memorial. So to book an appointment with us, it's very, very easy. A student can simply just drop into the centers to see advisor or they can book an in-person appointment. They can also choose phone advising or online advising. Um, Students can book appointment either through Navigate Student uh, or they can simply contact us via email advice at mount.ca or call us at 864-8801. Thank you. Thanks so much, Echo. It's always great to hear you talk about uh, academic advising, and, and certainly we know so many students that do avail of that service. So thank you very much for being here. Student residences. I know they're having a, a great big uh, weekend this weekend. It's a, it's a big uh, hoopla over there, I do believe, with students moving in. So I will turn it over to Mr. Bruce Belden. Hi, good evening. Uh, so the student residences uh, generally in St. John's comprise about 1,700 beds, and we have another 650-ish in Cornerbrook at Grenfell. Um, but as you can imagine, if any of you have lived in residence, it's, uh, it's a community. It's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And in, within the walls are contained all the services that uh, your son or daughter will uh, need or, or want during the course of the semester. It's uh, everything from safety, security to food services to cleaning to snow clearing to all the programmings that we do with regards to uh, everything from mental health to uh, study time to academic support and so on and so forth. And we do this in conjunction with our colleagues across campus, of course, and uh, it's all integrally linked with the groups such as ECHO's academic advising units and student life. So uh, we encourage students primarily to get involved. When they move here, uh, sitting in your room and being by yourself is really not the way to go. It is certainly a, a social environment, but it's an academic environment as well. We hope and, and encourage, and we work with our students individually and as groups to become involved as many things within residence as they can, but also across campus. And you'll hear tonight there are a myriad of things that you can get yourself involved in from uh, clubs and societies to student groups to uh, ad hoc peer uh, activities that occur almost daily. So uh, it, it's a very, it's a good lifestyle. And we know that students who live in res uh, are marginally more successful academically and socially, and, and we work hard to make sure that's the case. So uh, if your son or daughter is staying with us, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, but please reach out to us anytime. Uh, we are certainly at the, the main one website, residence.ca, and we can be reached uh, practically 24 hours a day. Thanks very much.
Wonderful. And I think uh, two things I think that you a lot you alluded to there is the get involved piece. And I think uh, everyone here will hear that theme uh, a lot this evening get, for the student to get involved in your campus. And I know there's so many activities and programs that you offer over there in residence and also, also the community. So I think uh, Memorial is all about a, a larger community, but also smaller networks of communities that are throughout. And we know certainly our resident students have a very strong community. Thank you for being with us, Bruce. Um, internationalization office, Ms. Lynn Walsh. Hi, everybody. Um, good morning or good evening or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, it's so nice to uh, be here today, join with all of our good colleagues. So I'm Lynn. I am the manager of the internationalization office here at the St. John's campus. Um, and I guess de depending upon if your student is an international student or a domestic student, our office actually interacts with all students. Um, so one side of, I guess, one area of, of support that we provide to our new students is our new international students. So we provide support, advice, direction, uh, next steps um, for students that are pre-arrival, during their arrival, and when they first arrive at the airport. Um, my colleague Marie will talk a little bit about the greeter program a bit later, but we offer the airport greeter program for new international students that are new to the country, new to the city, and are really unsure of how to get to their next destination. And they're met with the student at the airport, which is a really lovely thing. We've been doing that for, oh gosh, I think close to almost 20 years now, which is a really great thing. Um, so we support our international students in the areas of settlement health insurance, immigration, and a key piece is sort of social connection and uh, making friends. It's really hard. It's really hard for all of our students to, um, you know, show up at a new place and, and start over again, certainly when you leave a high school environment where you've had probably some core groups of, of, of your peers for many, many, many years. Um, another side of the house that we actually provide support on is um, supporting our students to go away. So as much as we would love to welcome your students here, uh, be here for a little bit, and then I would say study abroad if you can. So speaking to a point that Dr. Timmons brought up about, uh, I guess, taking advantage of, if it's possible, some global opportunities. And Harlow is is one of, uh, one of the two uh, campuses in the UK, us in Queens. And we're very lucky to have that Harlow campus. Um, and so our office provides support to students who would like to study abroad. Um, we have exchange advisors. We also um, were recently awarded a, um, a lot of money to provide support to Indigenous students, students with disabilities, and students from very social economic statuses to actually avail of opportunities to go abroad for different periods of time. Um, so if your student is thinking about it, I would just encourage you to harness that and reach out to us. We would love to connect with your student to just talk about exploring those global opportunities. Um, our office offers a lot of social programming that brings a lot of our Canadian students and our international students together. Um, we have our conversation partner program, which is a really great way for our domestic students to get some volunteer experience, as well as our MUN mentor program, which is a wonderful opportunity for new international students to be mentored with senior students. And sometimes those senior students are fellow international students, and many times they're Canadian students, which is just a wonderful way for our student population to just learn and grow from each other. And that's a match for one semester often kind of continues organically if the students want to kind of maintain that friendship throughout the cycle of their degree. Um, we do work very closely, as, as Bruce mentioned, the Director of Housing, uh, sorry, Student Residences mentioned, we work very closely with our colleagues, so fear not all of us today, we do communicate on a very regular basis and we're all uh, very in tune with what each other's doing. And to clue up, if you want to reach out to us, or if you'd like to let your student know how to get in touch with the Internationalization Office, if you, your student is going to be an international student, or if they're a domestic student and you'd like to just get some more information about international opportunities, you can email us at internationalatmon.ca. I hope that was helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your session. Oh, thank you, Lynn. Of course, it was helpful. You did such great work over there in the internationalization office. My mother used to want me to go abroad when I was in my undergrad and she would say, how can I miss you, Julia, if you won't go away? <laughs> Um, so, Student Wellness and Counseling Center, it's a, a pleasure to have Dr. Ken Fowler on this call. Good evening, good day, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Fowler. I'm the director of the Student Wellness and Counseling Center. 
It's a delight to be here. And uh, as you can imagine, the, the Student Wellness and Counseling Center has been a really busy place and continues to be, which is kind of the way we like it. We, we want students to feel that they can connect with us anytime. And even though it's been quite busy, uh, we've been really innovative getting to as many students as possible anywhere in the province and in the world for that matter. So we've learned a lot since COVID began and, and uh, you know, I think it's made us more prepared for this particular semester. So, so uh, we look forward to seeing your learners for sure. Um, so the Student Wellness and Counseling Center, our main mission is to provide integrated medical and mental health services to address the needs of students. So we have primary health care services, counseling, health promotion, disease prevention, and wellness education. Now, our, our medical services, what students will experience at our center, uh, we have family physicians who provide the same types of services that, that uh, would be experienced in a community medical clinic. And we also have psychiatry services, uh, a pediatrician, an adolescent pediatrician, and uh, nursing professionals as well. Now, the, the the interesting fact about our medical providers is that they're experts in, in the uh, demographic in, in post-secondary students. So the things that students present with in terms of, you know, reproductive health or, you know, um, these kind of prevention, uh, medical prevention, um, they're experts in the field. So, and, and, and they provide terrific support. Um, in terms of the medical or the mental health supports that we provide, Students come to us for a variety of reasons, and it's, it's a well-known fact that post-secondary students are a specific group of interest, you know, because they may experience trouble with sleep, adjusting to the new environment, you know, moving to campus, for example. Relationship issues where, where that's beginning, you know, they're beginning this kind of in, uh, involved with other people. Uh, academic struggles as well. So the counseling services that we provide allow students uh, to manage that and return to the coursework. Uh, and relationships that they have, clear their minds, get a better idea of how to manage things and actually build resilience. So that's kind of the the uh, the, the mandate for, for our med uh, mental health services. Now, the interesting fact about med um, mental health services is that 65% of the students that ask for help, it's the very first time that they've asked for uh, mental health support. So their experience with us is they're actually learning the value of it and how to actually interact with us. So so. You know, it's it's a real um, part of part of what we provide is education about you know how to you know for self care that kind of thing, um, and we've been a busy place as I said for the medical services we've been managing the COVID pandemic for the last couple of years in terms of PPE and testing, and we'll continue uh, doing the testing and and you know like and advising on that, um, and as I said we're very busy we we, we do eighteen thousand physician visits a year. And we see, well, for the last couple of years, we've seen 2,000 students for mental health support or they've reached out to us. So uh, we're on the fifth floor of the, the University Center and um, we have a website, the Stu Wilson Counseling Center website and everything is available through that. So uh, thanks for, for your time, thank you. Thanks very much. I'm so glad you're here and uh, the, the programs that you run uh, upstairs. I'm on the third floor and they're around the, the fifth are fantastic. They're very valuable and it's always a pleasure to to work with your students uh, that are, you know, uh, working with them for you and, and coming up with health and wellness programming as well for for all students. So thank you very much for being here. Um, so from student life, we have Dr. Jennifer Brown and I'm so glad you're here, Dr. Brown. Thanks very much, Julia. I'll try to be as brief as possible because we want to hear from you. Uh, but I'll just highlight some of the services that are provided by Student Life. It's a diverse unit with a real focus on engaging, connecting and supporting students to reach their academic and personal goals. Um, so uh, career development is the first unit. And of course, I think most of us are familiar with the services that are provided there. ECHO referred to students who sometimes change their minds. And we see a lot of students who come in and are not 100% Sure, the career center is a place where they can go to do different assessments and speak to a career advisor and, and also then be connected with academic advising. There's a lot of partnership there. But if you want to work on campus, you want to have an updated resume, uh, interview tips, all the things that you think about connections with employers and certainly supporting students as they transition to the world of work, the career center is the place to go. All of the services I will speak to are in the university center. Um, so that's kind of a hub of services for students. The Blondin Center is another uh, service, of course, if you have a student um, 
who has a disability, who who would need some supports uh, along their academic journey to ensure that they are set up for success, the Blondin Centre is the place for them to go. Um, and we would encourage students to go in as early as possible to ensure that those supports are in place. It's also a place that if you ha if something happens during your time at the university, you fall and break a leg, you might need some temporary supports. Uh, the Blondin Centre would provide those uh, services as well. Uh, the next one will be the Student Experience Office, and it provides fabulous programming, just like we're experiencing here tonight. Uh, and it would also do welcome, it would do leadership programming. It has a fabulous office called the Student Volunteer Bureau that we hope most of your uh, young people connect with at some point. And they also are the place to go when you have a question. So if you have a question about anything, I would encourage you to email ask at mon.ca and that this is the group that will uh, make sure that you get the answers or your students get the answers to the questions that they have. Uh, they also do the parents newsletter. And I would ask maybe if Rhonda or Jenny could pop in the, the link in there so students or parents could sign up for the parent and supporter newsletter and other uh, resources that we have there for this group of people. And finally, we have student support and student support. Uh, most students will will likely never need uh, to use that office, but for those that do, it's a wonderful group of people who support students who hit bumps along the way. Uh, it could be a death in a family. It could be illness. It could be things like financial insecurity or housing uh, issues and things like that. So there's lots of support. My message to you is that there are so many people at Memorial there to support your student throughout their entire journey. And uh, I'll stop there and pass it back to Julia so we can get to your questions and delve into some of those a little bit more deeply. Thank you very much. It, it, it is uh, it is really fun uh, to be here in student life and to see the the hubbub of activity and the excitement of the students and also um, our staff and our professors and admin. It's it's really a beautiful place to be right now on campus. So um, thank you for all those introductions. I think it gives everyone a really uh, sort of tops of trees overview on what we are here uh, to offer your student and um and i also encourage you later in from eight o'clock to nine o'clock there are some breakout rooms that you can enter and ask more specific questions i am keeping an eye on the question and answers and also on the chat as well but um before we um continue on with your questions i'm going to ask our panelists and i might uh, ask a couple of you we'll see how time uh, allows um, me to go through everyone but i'm going to take us all back and even if you're here as a parent just think back to when you were a first year student and coming on campus for that very first time it is such an important um, transition and a, and a real story in our lives so i ask our panelists and i i'll i'll uh, call on you what would you tell your first year self uh, this is a really good exercise in many, many aspects of our lives, but for this one, what would you tell your first year self on that first day of university uh, if you could go back in time? Can you share that with us? I'll call on um, Echo, perhaps. Hi, thank you, Julia. Um, now I think back. I think when I was um, the first semester, I was very nervous. I was very shy. So I wish uh, I wish I had known how useful the campus events were back then uh, to make friends. Uh, I did went through a period of time uh, feeling lonely. So I think uh, so I want your students to know that we have many great campus events planned for students. Uh, they should uh, participate in some of them. These events are great to build. Uh, skills like time management skill as well as to build social connection and friendship with new friends oh that's that is wonderful thank you very much for that echo um and i think dr timmons is still on on the, this call and i would be so excited to hear what would you tell your very first year self so i would be very similar to actually what you said julia when you were talking to bruce and what echo said um, I had to work when I went to university, so I worked as I studied because um, I, uh, we didn't have the means to support um, all of us. Well, I came from a family of six, but and we all went to university. But what I could have done that I didn't do is I could have got involved in 
some clubs and some organizations. Um, I just focused on studying, working and partying. And I didn't get involved in the university student union or in the clubs or on the paper or all of the opportunities that are there. So I'm going to ask the parents to encourage your son and daughters to encourage them to get engaged, to get engaged in the campus and community, to join clubs, to um, to really look at opportunities like student union. My two youngest got involved in the student union when they were in university and it really enhanced their university experience. So that is what I would have told myself when I first started, but no one told me that. <laughs> and of course, this is a different era as well. I mean, we all kind of evolve and change, and I think our university has evolved and changed with us too, so that we know that that co-curricular experience, the experience of the student at university is a really critical part of their journey. So I think I would have said that to my first year self too. I, I was very much into the uh, curricular part of uh, the student and I did well and the co-curricular, mm, not so much, uh, which is interesting because I'm so uh, uh, driven by the co-curricular experience now in my career. Um, let's go with, uh, and thank you for answering that. It's, it's very nice to hear uh, perspectives. Bruce, what would you tell your first year self? Oh, that, that's a loaded question. Well, I, I had the social thing down pat, and I see some people on this call were with me, so let's keep that quiet. But I would have told myself, um, reach out to the, the groups that are at the university who can help you, because I, I didn't do that. And it was in the 80s, but uh, they were there and they were available to help me. But I, I didn't reach out probably because I didn't know about it. And um, it's completely different now. So I just sent my 18 year old off to university and she's completely armed with the with the answers to those questions. So I would have said, uh, Bruce, reach out and talk to the registrar and talk to your faculty advisor and uh, see what your questions can be answered. Absolutely. Mm, I agree. I agree. Um, uh, let's see, Lynn Walsh, what would you tell your first year self? I'm not sure if I could actually say this, but maybe I will anyway. I will, um, so I would say, I'm actually going to echo what Bruce said, uh, talk to registers off in academic advising. Um, I didn't do so well throughout my, sort of the start of my academic uh, experience, and I was asked to leave officially, and then I returned, and I, I've, I've done much better since then, but I worked through school, too. I put myself through, and I didn't, I just worked and went to school, worked and went to school, and I socialized a bit too much, and um, then had to reevaluate my priorities, but I didn't really uh, know who to talk to about my courses and how I was doing or how I could try and do better, so I, I, I think it's that I didn't, I would tell myself to, to reach out to offices and supports and, and pay, pay a bit more attention to <laughs> and attend some of those um, orientation and get together events. So you could really learn a lot from those. And I think I missed out on that piece. Um, I've learned from my experiences, but I think I would tell my, my former self to, to reach out and get that advice and seek that support. I think that would have been really helpful. Lynn, I think you've made up for it because you've certainly attended enough of our um, <laughs> orientations as of late. So I think you're OK. <laughs> and uh, Jennifer, Dr. Brown, what would you tell your first year self? Uh, well, a lot of what's already been said, but, you know, get involved. I moved from rural Newfoundland to the big city of St. John's and there wasn't very many of us that came from my high school. So trying to find your niche uh, and that new group of friends, I think uh, my advice uh, to myself will be don't wait, get involved right in that very first semester and uh, ask for help. Uh, I don't think we as first year students realize how many people are there on campus to help us with any question or any situation that arises. So just even popping into an office and asking uh, someone for help, they will uh, would likely put you in the right direction. And the other advice I'd say is you can do this. You can do this. You did it. I did it. Yay, I did it all these years later. But you can do it. Just try to stay positive and know that if you've been accepted, you are worthy and you are capable of completing your degree at Memorial. Uh, I agree, and I would also like to add that there are so many people that are in your corner and there are so many supports uh, for for each student uh, to help them get through um, the easy times, but also the hard times. Uh, 
Um, okay, so we'll go into some questions. I do see some are coming through. So what I'll do is start with uh, some that have come through in the registration form, and then I will try to find them on the Q&A here. So thanks everyone for um, contributing, uh, and thank you for answering, of course, to our STEAM panel. So this is one for student life. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Also, it could be uh, student residences too that I'm, I'm now looking at it. How involved should parents be in their child's university experience? In the past, parents were generally discouraged from having active roles in post-secondary schooling. What is the new balance to be expected or suggested? I very, very much like that question. Dr. Brown. So I think that's a great question, actually. And uh, I think that, I think what we have to remember is we all want the same thing. We all want the, our students to be successful and to have an awesome experience while going to university. I think parents are so critical, actually. I know not everyone agrees with my opinion on this. I think it's just how you support the student. Being here on this call is absolutely fantastic. Signing up for the newsletter, getting the information from campus so that when you get that phone call in the middle of the night from your uh, child who is having that moment where they don't think that they can go on, you know that there are people on campus who can help them with whatever problem that they have just uh, put on you and to refer them to the supports, to myself, to Julia, to Bruce, to Echo, to Ken, whoever is, is there, to Lynn, uh, you know the supports that are available and giving them that information then because they're going to get a lot of information when they start and they've done hopefully MUN 101, which was a, a wonderful transition program that provided them with a lot of information. But in those moments, they may not remember. You will, you will remember that there is a student support office. You will remember that student residence has fantastic supports. So connecting your student or directing them to connect with the people on campus who can support them, I think uh, it will be, it's it's giving them independence and, and helping them move along, uh, but also giving you the peace of mind to know that you can answer those questions and provide the support that they need in that moment. So I think it's a balancing act. Of course, if you call and ask certain questions, we are not going to be able to answer them. And Bruce can speak to that for sure. Uh, they are adults. And so um, there's things around privacy, but you will have the information. You will have the tools to be able to support them. And we will work together to make sure that your student is successful. Absolutely. I think we've come a long way since my dad was dropped off at the at the university on Parade Street and then picked up four years later. You know, like I think we've come a long way and we do encourage our parents to be as supportive or our, our family members and supporters to be as supportive to um, to these beautiful students as possible. Bruce, do you want to add in on that? I know that you you have uh, you deal with a, quite a lot of parents over there. Yeah, so uh, first of all, we will take any inquiry from a parent. I have never, ever not responded to a parent. Uh, but as Jennifer just mentioned, privacy precludes our ability to get into detail. Unless a student will sign a waiver in terms of uh, access to their, their record of discipline or academics and so on and so forth. So you need to be aware of that. But uh, I would say, and, and I use this in strongest terms as possible, trust your child, trust your family member, to make the right decisions, but empower them to do so and, and give them full reign of authority to make their own decisions and, and problem solve on their own because it will make them stronger and it'll certainly help their problems get solved easier because they won't repeat them if there's an issue around you know performance. And that's extremely important. So we would encourage you to, to trust them and empower them. But certainly if you, if you have a residence question and, and other service questions, we'll all respond. But how deep in detail we can go will be uh, limited by our privacy obligations. Indeed, indeed. Sometimes it's hard to send these little birds out of the nest to fly on their own, but we're here to help support them. Um, okay, so I'm just noticing the time. This has been a fantastic conversation so far, and I want to get through a few more questions. I know I can see one of the uh, Q&A questions there is around um, uh, health and safety on campus. So maybe I will ask Dr. Fowler, what are the current COVID guidelines in place currently at the university? Okay, the, so the, our universities try to be cautious. We, you know, obviously there, there's still talk about potential waves for COVID uh, transmission, that kind of thing. So what we decided to do is make um, 
classroom, mandatory in classrooms and laboratories and in areas where people are gathering, like the Stu Wilson Counseling Center, because it's a wellness center and, and a medical clinic, you know, people with, with, you know, obviously transmission can occur in waiting rooms, for example. So that area and also a rapid testing clinic that we've developed. So masking will be essential and mandatory there. Um, we'll also be providing the rapid testing service, which uh, I think will be really important to try to track, uh, you know, potential transmission and, and um, and try to determine whether there are cluster, there's clusters on camps. And I think there was a question there I, I saw in the chat about uh, what happens in residence. Well, myself and Bruce have been working very closely the last two years to make sure that kids, if they're symptomatic or or they've been exposed, that we we do the testing and try to you know work on an isolation kind of scenario for them. But we'll be continuously monitoring that and also monitoring the public health directives from the from the province. Should anything shift in in, in our communities, for example, so. As a, our province has also directed, we, we, we think it's really important to, to strongly recommend mask wearing, in, particularly in public areas of our university, and that all the community members in, at Memorial just monitor symptoms or, or exposure if that's an issue for them. And if, they, if uh, there has been uh, exposure or someone is recovering from, from COVID, that they do the isolation time and when they return, that they mask up as well and they, they, they look at you know, where they're gathering in terms of distancing. So hopefully that answers your question. I was going to mention that if, if the detail is missing from some of these answers, please feel free to contact me directly. So hopefully that helps. Uh, uh, absolutely. And uh, I can give you all an email ask at mun.ca. That is our office and we get those emails. We can funnel that to the appropriate person. If, if some of your questions are not answered today, or if you think of others, we are so happy to funnel that question and get that answer for you. Um, okay, here's a really uh, exciting one. Are there orientations or activities for students living off campus? I will hand that to Dr. Jennifer Brown. Absolutely, there is a fantastic uh, number of activities that are planned. Uh, they're for all students, uh, both in residence and off campus. So uh, there's a full schedule and I would ask maybe if the schedule could be shared if folks want to see it uh, in the chat there. Uh, there's everything from in person like fairs and events, uh, game nights. Uh, my, my goodness, the list is so long. It's hard to remember it all. Uh, and then there's some virtual events as well. We do have still students who are not on campus, uh, but all students, whether they're living close by or they are not, they are. There's a number of events for them to connect with others, learn about campus, have fun. That's an important thing. Uh, most of these events are really around providing information, but also connecting students with each other so that they can make those friendships. So that link, I'm thinking it's probably there now, will highlight everything, but 100% tons of activities for all students. Uh, and most of our students, our domestic students, are uh, commuter students. So that is our, our um, programming is designed with that in mind. So lots to get involved in. And it's certainly uh, a real Mm, welcoming and community building uh, feeling here on campus, certainly the first couple of weeks of September. We like to continue that. We like to build programming that brings our students together and creates a sense of belonging and that sense of home with them because we know that also supports them. Um, and I think too in the chat, some of the links uh, will be going up. Uh, Jenny or Rhonda, if you would kindly put them there. I can't see them right now, but I'm sure they're there for you. Um, also, our website, mon.ca, uh, there's a great search engine. You can always put welcome in there, fall welcome, and uh, it'll certainly come up for you. Also, uh, ask at mon.ca, if you, I'm going to I'm going to put that one in. Uh, you can certainly email us any of these questions and we will certainly get back to you right away. We do take that email very seriously. Um, okay, internationalization office. Is there a way for my student to connect with other students after arrival? Uh, yeah, there absolutely is. Um, our um, our office um, offers a lot of programming, um, uh, sort of structured weekly social programming, as well as various events throughout the term that try and encourage students to come together. Um, but we also uh, try and, 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 and provide and inform our new international students about the other programs that exist, um, you know, whether they're um, sort of one semester or two semesters and depending on the student's interests. So 
And by that, I mean, there's various mentor programs that are offered all across Mon, uh, Memorial University. Sorry, there's various mentoring programs. There's mentoring programs in different academic units, which may be very applicable to your student. That would be a wonderful way for your student to meet um, not only you know individuals within their own faculty, but some faculties and schools are just so big. It's a chance to really get to know peers and friends of peers, and you get to learn about other people's profs and supervisors and whatnot. Um, so in, in, in a faculty, yes, um, there's mentoring programs. We offer a mentoring program at our office. It's a wonderful way for students to, to meet other students, especially if, you know, your, your student, um, you know, well, we, we, we talked about this already, but depending on your, your personality, um, just the, the, the change that's happening, at, you know, for everybody, it's, it's such a, a new, it's, a, it's so much going on the first few weeks, let alone the first semester um, and settling in and, and just have finding a few buddies and finding a few friends can really make a make a difference. Um, our office organizes weekly social programming like discussion group and coffee club. Um, it's very informal. It's some of it's structured in terms of a topic and that topics put out and people talk and and oftentimes the Friday is to show up, have coffee, tea, a few biscuits and just just get to know each other. Um, there are also um, the conversation partner program that I talked about. That's a wonderful way for students to just meet other students. Um, so there's so many events that are happening, uh, it, you know, within the individuals that are on this call today, the different units, faculties and schools, uh, the, you know, the student support office, student res, there's you, like, it's amazing for student stays in res, they're just going to meet people organically, it's going to happen. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities and options. And if you find that, you know, if you're checking in with your student or your student just kind of conveys to you, you just get a sense like, ah, uh, I feel like you know things are not going too well, or I'm just getting a sense. I know my I know my son, I know my daughter, I know my student. Uh, I'm not too sure how they're how they're settling in. Then you can reach out to our office. Um, we we have a lot of advisors um, <clears throat> on our team, and we have a couple of counselors as well. And one of our advisors is an outreach advisor, and you know part of the scope of her role is to sort of connect with students on personal issues. So. If, if you sort of sense that at any point throughout your student's degree, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. And then we could also try and, and share with you some of the additional information that you maybe you can share with your student. But there's lots of ways for students to connect with other students on campus. I hope that's helpful. And if it's not, please feel free to stick around and maybe we could talk about it a bit more at the breakout uh, session. Absolutely. So um, Lynn and Marie will both be in a breakout session about the internationalization office. They do offer tons of programming. Uh, and uh, so I know that they'll be so excited to chat with you about um, all the things that they help support students. Um, so this question came in, uh, I think, earlier this week, um, and it's for Echo Pittman uh, with academic advising, I think. Um, during the first year, if a student wishes to change the degree they initially applied for, what is that process? Echo, I think you are mm -hmm. muted, perhaps. Thank you, Julia. Uh <laughs> no problem. Uh, it all depends on what program students want to change to. Uh, some of program are self-declare and the student can simply change to another program. Other programs the student do have to complete a set of courses before they are eligible to apply for the program. So uh, my advice here is uh, when students start thinking about changing program, they should connect with the advisors at the Academic Advising Center and to have for a chat, the advisor will be able to guide students through that process. Absolutely. And, and this is another one for you as well. What advice do you have for, for my student as a new student in a new city who has not been in class learning for almost two years? That is a really an interesting one because uh, yeah. we really haven't had that uh, before this pandemic. Yeah, I uh, would encourage students to uh, attend classes and also to uh, speak with the course professors. Uh, sometimes the students uh, uh, are afraid to speak with the uh, course professors a lot of time and the students sometimes uh, face challenges. However, all the professors here at Memorial are very welcoming and would like to see the students succeed and students should feel free uh, when they feel that they are 
uh, not sure what they are learning or they are unsure uh, what the course is about, they should speak with the course professor and they can help. Absolutely. Thank you, Echo. Um, let us see now. Um, this Julia? one. Julia? Yes. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but there are a couple of questions in the chat that I think we should address because they're, they're people that are, uh, some of them are yes, no answers actually. So I don't yes. know if you have them in front of you, but one of them, because I know we only have five minutes. Uh, yes, one of them is uh, what would happen if you were living in residence and your roommate or you tested positive for COVID? So I'm thinking that's a Bruce question, but, and there's a couple of more there. I think if we can get through those ones in the last few minutes, that would help the folks that are online. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Bruce, what would happen if your um, roommate got COVID? Uh, well, so uh, as Dr. Fowler said earlier, we work closely with the Wellness Center. Uh, there's a regimen of testing that takes place and certainly we uh, help students isolate in place and we'll feed them. Uh, we'll make sure their needs are taken care of. We'll check in on them for the period that they're in their room. And uh, generally that that has worked in various forms in the last couple of years uh, to the degree. I think we were one of the most successful universities in terms of limiting transit transmission. So uh, there are protocols in place. So be assured of that. Absolutely. Uh, let us see, what is the process for my child to apply for a co-op permit and internship? Who should that one go to? Well, I guess I can jump in on that one. Uh, it depends. I guess I, I just need a little bit more context. Uh, if they are an international student or a domestic student, if it, the internship is abro going abroad or if it's if it's in Canada. Uh, but we have a fantastic uh, co-op uh, co-op offices and in career development we have the expertise there to assist students who are going abroad to work so again without the particulars it's hard to answer that specific question but uh just know that you can reach out to career development at mon.ca sorry i'm getting a phone call um and uh, we can make sure that we answer the question specific to your student situation Absolutely, and I think this will be the last question now before we just sign off uh, from this fantastic hour. I can't believe this hour went so fast. I, I, I don't know if it felt fast to you, but it felt like 10 minutes. Um, this last question, uh, fees are due on September 6th, but the money enrollment scholarship is still not in my daughter's account. When will these funds be deposited and will late fees incur if it is not in the account by the 6th? Can anyone speak to that? Julia, uh, this is Echo. I can try to answer. I think sometimes our scholarship office may apply the uh, scholarship into the account after the first day of classes. So if uh, the parents or supporter who um, ask that question, if you can give me uh, your uh, uh, contact information or you can send email to my email account, echopmont.ca, I will make sure that I connect you with our scholarship manager to help answer that question. And I put your email there in the chat. Oh, there it is. Great. Um, okay, so I encourage everyone. Um, this this conversation is so wonderful, and wouldn't it be great to uh, even have it live, and we could uh, stand around and chat or have booths, and we can really talk. So as we evolve and pivot again this year uh, into a new uh, era of post COVID or living with COVID, whatever that looks like, we really, really look forward to seeing you in person and we really welcome emails uh, from you uh, about any of these questions. We're happy to answer them. The email once again, the, the general email that we can send off and, and be sort of a traffic cop with is ask at mon.ca, so that'll come into the student experience office and then we can uh, navigate to that for you. So um, that brings us to the end of this hour. Um, I want to deeply thank our panelists, Dr. Echo Pittman with Academic Advising, and Mr. Bruce Belbin with Student Residences, Ms. Lynn Walsh and Ms. Marie Curtis with the Internationalization Office, uh, Dr. Ken Fowler with Student Wellness and Counseling Center, we often call that SWCC, and Dr. Jennifer Brown with Student Life. Uh, I think it's been a pleasure for me to host you today. Thank you uh, as well to John Duff uh, and Rhonda and Jenny in the background that are helping me navigate. Um, it, it's been a real pleasure to have this conversation. Uh, and I turn it back to you if you have any other comments or want to end this session with anything. 
I'll just jump in for one second. I know there's some other questions that we didn't get to answer in the chat there. So if folks want to, if you have a question that was not answered, if you want to stay on for an extra minute, I can stay on to try to answer those. Uh, and if not, go right into your breakouts or you can join the breakout in a minute or two. But I do know some of them were very specific questions and I want to make sure that you get those answers. Uh, uh, Jennifer, so stay on. So, sorry, Jennifer, it's Lynn. Do you mind if I chime in real quick? Because I saw a question there about a, a Canadian who's studying abroad and wanted to register for an airport greet. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, most definitely. Uh, so uh, the um, if you the easiest thing to do is email international at mon.ca and we can give uh, your student the steps that they need to uh, to get that information and register for an airport greet. Great. Absolutely. You can also meet with Lynn in a, a breakout room. Oh yeah, Marie for sure. I just wasn't sure there. if that I wasn't sure if that person would maybe still be here. I hope or they were hot, maybe going to another breakout room. So I just wanted to cover. Oh, cover I appreciate that very much, Lynn. So without further ado, we thank you all for being here. This was a great, great uh, hour. A wonderful way to spend a Wednesday evening. Uh, and I'll hand it now to John Duff. We're going to go into breakout rooms. I think it's 801. So um, without further ado, thank you for everyone. Thank you for those that are watching on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, and we look forward to seeing your student in a couple of days and of course reach out with anything that you may have a question for so thank you again